Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy, and in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to my new ruler called Chevy, which I designed with Creative Grids. But I have to admit, as much as I love Chevy, and I do, I feel a little conflicted about having a ruler named Chevy. You see, I'm from a Ford family. No, like literally a Ford family. My husband's grandpa, who taught me how to quilt, his last name was Ford. He worked at the Ford plant where he retired and my father-in-law currently works for the Ford Motor Company. So, oh well, I'm sure they won't be too mad at me. Chevy, who gets his name from the chevron shape that he makes. I know he kind of looks like a boomerang a little bit, but whatever you do, don't throw him. He doesn't like that. With a straight and a curvy side, there's so many ways that Chevy can help you improve your quilting. First, let's start with the straight edge. You can use a straight edge for stitching in the ditch, quilting echo lines, or quilting straight lines across your quilt, but the great thing is you don't have to rotate your ruler to quilt around a block. Or you can use the needle stops to create a chevron shape. Simply quilt the side of your ruler from needle stop to needle stop, reposition your ruler, and keep on quilting. The markings will help you keep your echo lines consistent. Try it as an all over design or in your borders. But if the straight edge is all business, then the curvy side is all fun. Quilting a straight line that angles down in a nice curve and then flattens back out has always been a little tricky for me. I either end up with a right angle or a wavy line. So that's exactly why I designed the ruler to kind of help myself out. I don't think that makes me selfish, does it? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna start by positioning my ruler on the quilt and I'm gonna keep it snug up against the foot of the machine. Now, as I work along that curve, one good habit I really want you to get is that I don't want you to quilt past your fingertips. But once you start to approach the edge of your fingertips, it's time to reposition your hands. The main reason is you have the most control of that ruler when the needle is in between your fingertips. So if my foot is up here and my hand is down there, what's going to happen? My ruler is going to come up a little bit and that never results in anything good. So even though Chevy's a nice long ruler, you'll want to reposition your hands often. And here I'm just going to walk my hands along the ruler and then continue. I think sometimes we think we have to do that whole line without stopping and that's definitely not the case. You can take your time and reposition your hand and that way you'll have much better results. Okay, so I know what you're thinking, great, a straight-ish, curvy-ish line, what can I do with that? Well, let me tell you, you can do a lot. First, just try it as a fun, modern, all-over design. You can quilt a row of them across the area using the needle stops to reposition and keep it consistent. And then the next row, you can flip it so that it's a mirror image. That's gonna give you a fun, unexpected design that's gonna look fantastic on your quilts. You can try some variations. You can echo the lines and then flip them. You can flip every other one. It's kind of like a choose your own quilting adventure. I'm probably just a little biased, but I think that's a pretty amazing design. But maybe you want the quilting more dense. Maybe you wanna quilt it to death because you're like me. Well, that's where these reference lines come in handy. Using the reference marks, you can create other designs. For instance, I could start quilting along the curvy side of Chevy, but stop when I get to that center point. I can reposition the ruler and start again from the beginning. It's gonna kinda of keep going up and up and up. And you'll just continue that across the area. So I'm gonna go ahead and echo that line so that I can keep quilting that same design. That's where these markings come in really handy. If I line the edge of my ruler up with that previously quilted line, I'm gonna have about a quarter inch spacing in between the needle and the edge of the foot. But if I really need to get this quilt done fast or I don't wanna quilt it to death, I can align the first marking up with the previously quilted line and that will give me a half inch spacing. Or if you're like me and you can't decide, you can use both, alternating between a quarter and a half of an inch. Now that's just using Chevy as an all over design. He actually works really well to make motifs. Just by quilting along the curvy side and then repositioning it, you can get some fun looking designs. Even one that looks kind of like a wine glass. I promise, I didn't do that on purpose. What are you gonna do? It just is what it is. So between the straight edge, the curvy side, the needle stops, the markings in both colors, this is gonna be a really versatile ruler.